Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of andrewsfootball.com. Welcome to my 2020 NFL mock draft. And if you're new to my channel and you're wondering, hey, why should I follow this guy? Well, number one, this is the only thing I do. I don't follow baseball. I don't follow basketball. I don't follow bowling. I don't follow hockey. It's football. 365 days out of the year. Well, this year, 366. But... For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that I consistently make money betting on the NFL. So that's what makes me an expert, is that I can consistently make money off my football knowledge. Bottom line, hey look, do you want a vegan cooking your steak? Would you go to a broke investment broker? Do you want a 400 pound personal trainer? No, of course not. So get your football knowledge from somebody who actually puts his money where his mouth is. So if you're new to my channel and you haven't done it already, there's a button right around here. See it, see it, see it. Bam, hit that button, become one of the greatest people on planet Earth and let's start with the mock. First off, let's break down the Detroit Lions. Uh, last year they went 3-12-1, but they decided not to fire Matt Patricia. Instead, uh, team owner Martha Ford went public in saying that in 2020, uh, we're, we expect to be a playoff contender. So basically what she's saying is that you need to go from three wins Basically the 10 wins, because that's what it took you uh, to get into the playoffs last year. Sometimes you can get to the playoffs with nine, but basically I think your goal is a minimum of 10 right here. Now, with the Detroit Lions having some struggles on offense with Matthew Stafford missing roughly half the season, to me that makes perfect sense. But you're Matt Patricia, you're supposedly this uh, defensive guru, and here's some defensive numbers for you. They were 31st in the league in yards, 26 in points, and here's, here's what teams did against you in a passing game. 381 out of 611, that's 60.5% for an NFL worst, 4,551 yards, 33 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions. If you were to break this down to a weekly average, uh, basically on a weekly average, quarterbacks went... Um, basically uh, 23 out of 38 for 284 and two touchdowns. You had seven interceptions, so eight would be just half. So since you got less than half of an interception on an average, I'm going to say you got none. So, uh, you know, on, on the flip side, I got two touchdowns, but 33 divided by 16 is a little more than two. So I went down on touchdowns. And, and so that, that's how I got my numbers. But this is an average week. 23 out of 38, 284, and two touchdowns, no picks. That's not good, all right? And you're supposedly this defensive guru. So bottom line, this defense needs a complete overhaul. Uh, you're going to get some help in free agency. You got some dollars to spend during free agency, but you need a player who can step in immediately and help you. So you got the third pick. Who can step in today and help you right away? Well, first off, I, I see a lot of mocks having Jeffrey Okuda, uh, my number one corner out of Ohio State, going here. But bottom line, in this type of defense, asking a rookie corner to come in and play man in this type of defense is extremely difficult. Uh, this is night and day compared to what he did in college. And I'm not saying Okuda can't come in and be a successful corner, but I don't see him being successful in this type of defense. Playing man in this style of defense is something that you need experienced corners to do. Asking a rookie to come in and being your day one starter in this particular defense is really setting him and Matt Patricia up for failure. I think Okuda could be a Pro Bowl caliber corner, just not in this defense. So I really think that even though I've seen a lot of mocks with Okuda going here, he's really not a good fit. I really think that corners need experience in the NFL to play tight man-on-man -man coverage. It's completely different than college. So I, even though I like Okuda, Okuda a lot, I don't think he's a good fit here at number three. Uh, second option, I think, is Brown. Uh, this is my second rated player, and he's a perfect fit. He plays defensive end in your base 3-4 package. He moves inside uh, in your nickel package, and he's a complete game changer. You put him on the defensive line, he instantly improves your defense. Uh, you have your third option, which is also Isaiah Simmons. Uh, this could be an interesting fit because he could basically play every back seven position available. Um, 
he doesn't really have a specific uh, position. You would kind of use him as a Swiss Army knife. Personally, I think he's a better fit as a 4-3 middle linebacker, maybe an outside linebacker. Um, ultimately, if this is Matt Patricia's first year, I think that you would take Simmons and have some fun with it. But because you need a player to come in right away and have an immediate impact, and, and Simmons doesn't really have a specific position that, that you would put him in on this type of defense, uh, my opinion is that your options would probably be Brown, Simmons, and, and then Okuda. Your other option, if you're the Detroit Lions, is trading down uh, in the draft. Now, obviously, the Giants wouldn't be interested in switching from four to three. But Miami, who's been rumored to trade up in the draft basically forever because they've been uh, stockpiling draft picks. They currently have the fifth, the 18th, the 26th, the 39th, and the 56th pick. Uh, in the upcoming draft, five of the first 56 picks in the draft belong to the Miami Dolphins. And as far as a viable trade candidate is concerned, there's three things that the Miami Dolphins have that the Detroit Lions could use. Uh, first off, they have a top five pick. All right. I just named three players who the Detroit Lions could take. Well, going from three to five, the Giants aren't going to take all three of these players. They can only get one. So you still have some options remaining uh, for those remaining players that would that would fit in perfectly. Second, I just mentioned Miami has all this draft capital. When you're looking for a trade partner, does a team have multiple trade picks to offer? Well, the Miami Dolphins have that. And third, and this is something that I haven't seen in a lot of mocks, and for me it makes a lot of sense, they have Josh Rosen, okay? Uh, bottom line, the Detroit Lions can't draft a quarterback at three. They're trying to win this year, and there's no way a rookie quarterback's going to come in and be better than Matthew Stafford, at least not immediately. But you need a backup quarterback, and, and Rosen's a cheap backup quarterback, plus... He, he's a guy who was the 10th pick overall just a couple years ago. So you get a guy who's a backup quarterback. He has the ability to be a starter, plus the contract's already there. So he's relatively cheap. You have to spend money in free agency. So why not get a cheap quarterback? So here's my trade scenario. The Miami Dolphins offer the 5th, 39th, and Josh Rosen to Detroit for the third pick in the draft. Now, multiple trade scenarios can work here, but here's why I like this. The third pick is worth 2,200 points if you're using the trade uh, draft chart. Um, the fifth pick's worth 1,700, and the 39th pick is worth 510. 1,700 plus 510 equals 2,210, right? But whether it's true or not, Detroit should counter with, well, you know, I got the Chargers offering this. I got Jacksonville, who has the ninth and the 20th picks in the draft. Carolina, the Jets. And it doesn't even matter if it's complete baloney or not. They should counter with that. So here's the deal. Miami got Josh Rosen for a late second, the 61st pick in the draft last year. All right. Now, Josh Rosen's value is not that of a late second. I would estimate it to be somewhere between a third and fourth round pick, anywhere between 75 and 100 points. All right. He fits a need. So you need a quarterback who's going to be a backup. You're going to probably spend money in free agency anyway. You're not going to get one that's going to cost less than Rosen. Plus, just two years ago, he's a first round pick. He was a 10th pick overall. So here's what you get. You get a top five pick, you get a high second round pick, and you get a backup quarterback. And without further ado, the Miami Dolphins are on the clock. In this mock, they've given up the fifth, the 39th, and Josh Rosen's for, for the rights to move up to the third pick in the draft. And with the third pick in the 2020 NFL draft, the Miami Dolphins select Tua, I cannot properly, properly pronounce his last name, quarterback out of Alabama. And if you're watching this video, you have to know who Tua is. But bottom line, this is my mock draft. This is what I predict. Let me, I want to know what you think, you know. Would you trade down if you're Detroit? If not, who do you take, who do you pick here? Do you think Miami trades up to three? In this mock, did Miami 
in this mock trade, did Miami give up too much? Did, did uh, they not give up enough? What do you think? I want to know. Comment down in the uh, comments below. Let, let's, let's have a discussion about this. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me the thumbs up and share with your friends. Now, tomorrow is the fourth pick in my mock. Giants, you're on the clock.